In this presentation, we hope to provide you with the tools you'll need to make field adjustments to your 100 horsepower power unit. We hope you will find this video useful, however we encourage you to contact us with any questions you may have concerning making adjustments to this system. Shown in this picture are your pumps. The smaller pump on the right is the clamp pressure pump, or more specifically the A10 VSO 18DR pump identified as number 9 on your schematic. This is a pressure compensated piston pump with a DR style compensator. The DR allows you to set the maximum pressure of the pump. This is an 18cc pump and at 1800 RPM this pump can provide approximately 8 to 9 gallons per minute of flow. Per the schematic we have set the maximum pressure of this pump at 1500 PSI. The larger pump in this photo is your tool pressure pump or more specifically the A10 VSO 140 DFR pump identified as number 8 on your schematic. It is a 140 cc pump and at 1800 RPM it can provide approximately 63 gallons per minute of flow. This too is a pressure compensated piston pump but this particular pump has been outfitted with a DFR or load sense style compensator. The DFR allows you to set the maximum pressure of the pump but also provides better speed control under varying loads on the tool pressure portion of your circuit. The DFR does this via a pressure signal coming from the quarter inch line you can see plumbed to the left side of the DFR compensator. Here is a closer view of your clamp pressure pump. Note the construction of the DR style compensator. There is a single adjustment screw with a jam nut. Turning this adjustment screw clockwise increases the pressure of the pump. It is important to note a few things about making adjustments to your DR compensator. First, a common issue with making adjustments to pump pressure is the effect that these adjustments may have on the relief valves in your circuit. For example, in your system we have installed a Sun RPEC LWN relief valve to protect the clamp pressure portion of your circuit. Note that this relief valve has been set at 1700 PSI or 200 PSI higher than the pump. This is to ensure that the relief valve doesn't attempt to open or relieve at your intended pump pressure setting of 1500 PSI. Any adjustments made to the DR compensator must take into consideration that ad additional adjustments to the relief valve may be required to avoid unintended consequences such as pump instability, motor overloading, excessive heat, or even pump failure. This is a closer view of your tool pressure pump. Note the construction of the DFR style compensator. There are two adjustment screws. The one closest to the pump functions in the same manner as the DR compensator on your clamp pressure pump. It is adjusted in the same manner as a DR style compensator and controls the maximum pressure of your pump. The other side of the DFR compensator features a quarter inch load sense or X port that is plumbed here with a quarter inch tube. This is the FR side of your compensator. Making adjustments to a DFR compensator can be a delicate and daunting task. In the videos that follow, you'll see that we've added a flow meter and an additional throttle valve to make these adjustments. These are critical tools for making a dynamic adjustment to a DFR compensator. Although we recommend that you contact us should you desire to make changes to your DFR pump settings, we will touch upon how to make adjustments in the upcoming video. Should you simply need to increase the speed of any tooling plumbed to the tool pressure side of your system, you should be able to do so by simply adjusting the Sun NFFD-LIN flow control valve identified as number 11 on your schematic. Okay, we've slowed down the video here a little bit to make things a little easier. Uh, this is DR control adjustment. Right now the technician is backing out the relief and the DR control on the pump. It's important to do this so you start off at a low safe pressure. Um, at this stage in the game we've already jogged the pump. We've verified that we have the proper right hand rotation. The pump is primed. 
and we've purged the system of air. You can see from that JIC cap right below the gauge there that this side of the circuit is deadheaded, which is, of course, essential to setting the pressure of a, of a pump. Right now, the technician is running the relief valve in clockwise. At this stage in the game, the DR compensator is still backed out. So what that means is the compensator is at a low pressure, most likely two or 300 PSI. We run the relief valve in all the way, knowing that the pump is safely at a low pressure. This also takes the relief valve out of the equation and, and prevents it from interfering with the pump. At this stage, the technician is going to adjust the DR compensator up to the intended pressure setting of the relief valve. So in this case, he's going to run his compensator up to 1700 PSI. And again, the relief valve is run in all the way. It's kind of out of the equation right now. Now that he's hit 1700 PSI, he's going to begin backing that relief valve out until it cracks. And he'll know it cracks because either the pressure will just barely begin to drop, or if you have an amp meter, a clamp-on amp meter connected to your motor, you'll see the, the amp load of the motor start to increase. Or if it's a quiet enough uh, environment, you'll be able to actually hear the motor load increase or the relief valve open. Those are all signs that the relief valve is cracked. You don't want to go much further than cracked. Uh, you just barely want to back that relief cartridge out until it starts to respond. And that's the point that you're going to want to lock down the lock nut, and at that point the relief valve will be set. There you see 1700 PSI. He'll go ahead and lock down the jam nut and then he'll move on to making the pump setting at the DR control. So now he's going to turn the DR control counterclockwise and bring that pump setting down from 1700 PSI to 1500 PSI. Once he's made adjustments and his gauge is reading 1500 PSI, he'll lock down that jam nut on the DR compensator will be set. Okay, in this view, uh, and a little bit closer to real time, we're going to illustrate the same process. Uh, at this stage, the technician is running the relief valve all the way. Now he's running his compensator up to the intended relief setting of 1700 PSI. He should just about be at 1700 at this stage. He's going back and forth checking his gauge and verifying that he is right at 1700. Helps to have a partner here watching your gauge. And one final tweak. There it is. Okay, now that he's at 1700, he's going to back his relief valve out until it cracks. So he's turning that adjustment screw counterclockwise until the gauge just barely starts to respond, which it has, and he's locking down his jam nut. That relief is now set. So back to the pump. We're going to reduce that pump setting down to 1500 PSI, and then the pump will be set. appears to be satisfied. We've reached 1500 PSI. Now he's going to lock down that jam nut and that pump is locked in at 1500 PSI with a safety relief setting of 1700 PSI. We wanted to give you a brief overview of the tooling necessary um, to make adjustments to the DFR side of your circuit. Again, the DFR compensator is installed on the larger volume tool pressure pump on your system. 
You can see in addition to the components installed on your power unit, we've added a, a flow meter. Uh, downstream of that flow meter is an additional gauge, and downstream of that gauge is an additional throttling device. Uh, you can see the, the, the needle valve there with the red T handle in the adjustment knob. Uh, these are all necessary to measure the differential pressure across your speed control, which is that item I just adjusted with my left hand there. If you need to make adjustments to the DFR side of your circuit, please give us a call. Um, we'd be happy to try to walk you through it over the phone, maybe see what you're aiming for, what you're trying to accomplish, uh, give you some things to look for, and if necessary, we can provide any technical support that's necessary to make that happen for you. But as discussed earlier on, if it's just speeding up the tool pressure side of your circuit, if that's the only thing you're looking to do, adjusting that needle valve that I, that the technician has, has got his hands on right there should be the only adjustment you'd need to make. Um, again, we strongly discourage you from making adjustments to the FR side of your DFR compensator. Uh, it's a tricky process. One thing leads to another, and before you know it, you kind of uh, have lost your way and, and could be in a pickle. So give us a call. We'd be happy to help.